back to my channel. So it is currently 100 degrees outside, which I think means it is officially swimsuit season. And I honestly have not bought a swimsuit since I was 13 because I am honestly too lazy to go and try them on in stores. And do you guys know that if I can make something, I probably will. So I thought that it was finally time to do a tutorial on how to just make a whole bunch of different kinds of swimsuits. And they're honestly not super hard, especially since swimsuit material is so stretchy. Like nothing really has to be that exact. So it's pretty easy to make them adjustable to your size. And I know that a lot of people like dread swimsuit shopping. So making your own is a really great alternative. So let's make some new swimsuits. So this is the fabric I'm going to be using for the first swimsuit design. And for swimsuits, you really need a four way stretch. Also, sorry if you hear noises, this is what is actively going on next to me. And I just bought this one off of Etsy, I can link it in the description box. And then I'm going to be using this white swimsuit fabric for my lining. Um, and this one I got a really long time ago at a local fabric store, but I'm sure you could find something extremely similar on Etsy. And for the bottoms, instead of giving you guys measurements like I typically do, I'm actually going to be tracing a pair that I made a little while ago that I really love the fit of. But if you don't have a swimsuit that you like, you can also trace a pair of underwear that fits you nicely. And so now I'm just going to basically lay it on top of my fabric. And I'm just going to cut around it, leaving about a half inch seam allowance. And if your underwear is shorter, you could just add a few more inches going up towards the top and kind of slanting a little bit. And a lot of swimsuit making is honestly trial and error until you get a shape that you really, really love. And then you just kind of keep recreating that same pair. And then once it's cut, I just like to fold it in half and make sure that it's symmetrical and just fix anything that isn't quite perfect. And now I'm just going to cut a second back piece, but after it's cut out, I'm going to fold this one in half and just cut the leg hole a little bit shorter. And then I'm also just going to cut a band piece out for the bottom that is about three inches wide and can fit all the way around my waist. And then I'm also going to cut our front and bottom pieces out of my lining fabric. And now all the pieces for our bottoms are cut. And now I quickly want to take a minute and talk about the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. And Skillshare is a huge online learning community with thousands of online classes and members across 150 different countries. They seriously have so many different classes to choose from. And I love their search engine because you can really just type in like anything you're interested in and get so many different results with different classes and different techniques. I'm always using it as a way to explore different art forms. So one of the classes that I've been taking recently is painting with acrylics create an abstract portrait by Alika Bot, and I really, really love her painting style. She mixes abstract with realism to create really stunning pieces, and she really takes you through the entire process to make your own portraits, and I really like Skillshare classes because they encourage you to find your own art style, and they don't just have art, they basically have everything from photography to writing to music to animation, and it's just a really great way to try out a bunch of different hobbies or maybe further something you already do. So if you guys are ready to try out Skillshare for yourselves, the first 1,000 people to click the link in my description or use my code PAPERSTARS will get a 1 month free trial of Skillshare to explore your creativity. Thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video and now let's get to work! So the first thing we're going to do to start sewing these up is I'm going to take our front and back pieces and put them pretty side to pretty side and I'm going to sew them together across this seam here on both the outer fabrics and the lining. And because we are using a stretch fabric, I'm going to make sure to use a stretch stitch. And one of my favorite ones on my machine is number seven. But if you don't have a stitch like this, a zigzag stitch works just as well. And now we're going to take these pieces and open them up like this. And I'm going to put these pieces pretty side to pretty side, and we're going to sew them together down either of these seams. And now that this has been sewn, I'm going to take some elastic and I'm going to put it all across these seams that we just sewed and I'm going to zigzag stitch it and this is going to help the bottoms not right up and I'm going to make sure to do this on the side with the outer fabric and I'm going to stitch this like right on top of the seam as close to my stitching as I can 
And this step is optional because I have made several bottoms without elastic, but I just felt like adding it in today. And you have to love running out of thread in the middle of the seam. And then we can trim down our raw edges and turn this right side out. All right, and now we can sew these side seams together by taking one of these across either side and opening them up and putting them pretty side to pretty side and sewing down this edge. And then we can turn it right side out and our bottoms are starting to come together. And now I'm gonna try them on and see if I need to take the waist in it all before finishing them up. And now these bottoms are almost done. The last thing we have to do is add the waistband to the top. So I'm just going to take this other piece that we cut out and I'm not even going to add elastic into this since the fabric is so darn stretchy. I just tried it on and pinned it to where it fits nice and tight on me. And I'm just going to sew across here. And then I'm going to fold this piece in half. And now I'm just going to attach this around the top of the waistband, stretching as needed and sewing all across the top. And make sure you sew this to both layers of the bottoms. And then we have our super cute swimsuit bottoms. All right, and now it is time to work on the top of this set. So I'm just going to take our fabric and fold it in half. And I'm basically just going to cut out a tank top shape. Like I said, this stuff really doesn't have to be perfect because this fabric is insanely stretchy. But once again, for this step, you could totally like trace a sports bra or like a top you already have or even a tank top to get yourself a general shape to start off with before you kind of adjust it to more of what you want. And this might look a little bit small, but it's going to stretch a whole bunch when we wear it. And for the back piece, I'm going to basically trace the same as the front, but I'm going to give it a really low back. And then once again, I'm going to just cut a strip to go around the bottom of the top. And this time I'm going to make it about three and a half inches thick. And then I'm going to cut the other two pieces out of my lining fabric again. And now all of our pieces have been cut. So I'm going to start by taking both of our outer layer pieces and lining them up with their lining layer pieces and sewing them across the neckline and their armholes. And obviously I cut out these pieces to be a little bit too big at the beginning, just because you can always make things smaller, not bigger. So it's always good to cut on the big side. But after I made the adjustments to the front piece, I used that piece to make similar adjustments to the back pieces and then finish sewing. And now we're going to turn our front piece right side out and then I'm going to put it inside of the one that is still inside out and I'm going to match up their straps making sure that both of the pretty sides of the green fabric are facing each other. And then we're going to pin these pieces together getting them to lay as flat as we possibly can and we're just going to lay it out flat and sew across the top here. And then I'm going to trim my seams and turn this right side out. And now you should have these shoulder seams attached with a finished neckline and armhole. And now to help these pieces not roll so we don't see any of the white fabric, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn it to the back side and I'm going to push all of my raw edges towards the lining piece and I'm going to top stitch them down with a tiny zigzag stitch to help keep them in place. And we're obviously not going to be able to do this all the way around the really skinny parts, but just doing it where you can is going to help a lot.
And now to finally connect either side of the top, we're going to take two sides that are connected by a strap and put them pretty side to pretty side. And then I'm going to pin and sew these pieces together. And then we can turn it back right side out and our top is almost done. And now I just tried on the top to make sure everything was fitting well and it's looking really, really nice so far. And we're really close to being done. We essentially just have to sew on the bottom band. But before I do this, I'm actually going to take some bra pads that I bought off of Amazon and I'm going to put them underneath our outer layer before I sew on the band just to give us a little bit more support when we wear it. And again, this step is totally optional. And then I just tried on the band and I marked it to a length that fits me nice and snugly all the way around. And now I'm just going to sew across this edge here. These always look like ridiculously small to the place that they're supposed to be sewn. Um, but now I am going to fold it in half and I'm going to stretch it and pin it all the way around the bottom of this piece, making sure to grab both of our layers. And then I'm going to sew all the way around the bottom. And then once we sew that, the first set is done. And now it's time to get started on swimsuit number two. And for this one, I am using this really pretty like periwinkle fabric, again, that I got from Etsy. And I think this time I'm going to start off by making the top. And for the back of this piece, I'm going to cut out basically a rectangle that is about six inches tall. And the width is a little bit less than half of my chest measurement. And again, it doesn't have to be that perfect. And then once we have the basic rectangle, I'm going to fold it in half and make the bottom of it kind of slant in a little bit. And then I'm going to take that back piece that we just cut out and use it to make our front piece. So I'm basically going to trace the sides of it and then make it kind of curve up like an armhole shape. And then I'm also going to give it kind of a scooping neckline. And then once that's cut out, I'm going to fold it in half and kind of cut a little keyhole shape out of the front. And I'm starting off making one that's pretty small because when we stitch around it, it's obviously going to get bigger and we can always change it if we want to. And this is what those pieces look like on top of each other so you can kind of see those changes that I made. And then this time we're going to be adding these really cute like frilly straps. So I'm going to cut out a really long piece that is two and a half inches wide and saving that for later. And then the last thing I'm going to cut out is just some thin little strips to use for a tie detail on the front. And then I'm going to put our outer fabric away. And then I'm actually going to be using this darker purple fabric as my lining, just because I was worried that with the white, it might be a little bit more see-through with the other light fabric on top. So I'm just going to be using this one instead, but I'm actually going to use later to make a different swimsuit. And like usual, I'm just going to be cutting our front and back pieces out of the lining too. And now normally we would start sewing these pieces together, but this time we're actually going to work on these straps and the little front ties first. And on the little ties, I'm just going to fold these pieces in half and use my little tiny zigzag stitch to stitch it all the way down. And then I'm going to cut off all of the excess and turn it right side out. And then to make the straps, I'm going to be taking this elastic. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to zigzag my elastic while stretching it to one side of my fabric. And then I'm going to flip that over and top stitch it down with another zigzag stitch while once again stretching it. Okay. 
And then I'm just going to finish this up by trimming this edge here down a little bit. And I think I'm also going to cut the ruffle down to be about an inch and a half. And this fabric doesn't fray so we don't have to worry about finishing this edge. All right, and now that we have all of these straps and ties done, we're going to start putting the top together. And the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to put these pieces pretty side to pretty side and sew their side seams together on both the outer fabric and the lining. And now that those are sewn, we're going to pin our straps and our little ties to the front. So on the little straps, to make them a little bit nicer when we sew them, right at the beginning I made this part pretty small and then kind of curved it up into the larger area so that when we attach it we don't have like this huge thick thing happening. Um, and now we want the little ruffles pointing outwards, so I'm going to put these pieces pretty side to pretty side and just pin them in place where I want them. And to make sure that I don't hit them when I'm sewing, I'm going to take this extra fabric and kind of fold it in and pin it away so that it's away from the seams. And then on the back, I marked out where the other end of the strap should go, so I'm just going to bring them around without twisting them and pin them in place. And then back to the front, I'm just going to pin the little ties where I want them, which is right at this little corner of the cutout. And so I'm going to just pin them that this raw edge here lines up with the round part and that I'm leaving enough seam allowance at the top so where I don't hit it. And now that those are all pinned in place, I'm going to take our lining and match these pieces up pretty side to pretty side. And then once that's all pinned, we can sew all the way around the top edge. Oh my gosh, this is looking so stinking cute! And next, to just make these edges a little bit nicer, I'm going to do that same technique that I did before, where I open this up and push my raw edges towards the lining, and just zigzag them all down. Alright, and now the very last step to finish up this top is we're going to take some elastic, and this one is a little bit thicker than the one that I used for the straps, and I cut a piece that fit nice and snugly around where the bottom of this top hits on me. And now I'm going to match up all of the bottom edges and just pin them in place so I make sure that everything lines up nicely. And I'm going to do basically the same thing to the bottom edge that I did with the straps. Where I'm first going to stretch and zigzag the elastic to this side. And then again we're going to fold it over. And instead of doing a really big zigzag stitch this time, I'm just going to do that little lightning bolt stitch. And we're only going to stretch this elastic so that it fits into this section. And we're not going to stretch it as hard as we did last time. And after we sew that, this top is done. And now to make the bottoms, I am going to be tracing the last pair that we made, but I'm going to be doing a different design this time. So I'm pretty much going to do the exact same steps to cut it out, except this time we're not going to need a band piece, and I'm going to make them a lot lower and kind of a curving shape at the top. And I know I just told you guys how to cut these bottoms out, but after I sewed them all together, they ended up being a lot more low rise than I wanted. So I ended up redoing all of the exact same steps that I'm going to show you guys, but with this cut instead. So just kind of ignore the cutting steps that I'm doing right here, and instead go for something that kind of follows the top of the bottoms more, and has a higher cut on the leg. And so this is what my front and back piece look like together for this pair. And like I said, this time we don't need a waistband, but we are going to have to cut out some extra strips to make ties. And once again, we're just going to cut the front and back pieces out of the lining. And again, now that we have all of our pieces, 
The first thing I'm actually going to work on is sewing all of these straps. So like we did on the top, I'm just going to fold this in half and stitch across it and then cut this seam nice and short and turn it right side out. And now that we have all the ties, we're going to start sewing these together by putting the corresponding pieces pretty side to pretty side and sewing them together down this seam here. All right, and now we're going to unfold these pieces and I'm going to take our straps and I'm going to pin one to either of these corners here and we want the raw edge to line up with the side here. And then we're going to have just the rest hanging in the middle. We want to make sure that we don't sew through the ties anywhere except for the corners. And then we're going to take the lining piece and put these pretty side to pretty side. And we're going to pin them together around all of their edges. But we're going to leave a small opening down one of these sides so that we have a place to turn it right side out. And now before we turn this right side out, I'm going to take a piece of elastic that fits snugly where I expect this swimsuit to hit around my waist. And I'm going to cut this piece in half. And I'm going to zigzag stitch one to either edge of the top to give it a little bit more structure. And again, you could do this around the leg holes too if you want. You would just have to make sure to not stitch it down where we left this opening so we still can turn it right side out. And now I'm just going to trim around these edges and turn it right side out. And these are looking super cute and now the very last thing to do is just to hand stitch up the little opening that we left to turn it right side out. And the bottoms are done! And for the next and final swimsuit, we're going to be making a one piece. So this time, this purple fabric is actually going to be my main fabric. And so to get us started, the first thing I did is I took my measurement for where I want the neckline to be all the way down to where the crotch should hit. And for me, that was 22 inches. So I'm going to mark the top of the swimsuit and the bottom. And now once again, I'm going to be bringing in these bottoms that I really like the cut of. And I'm going to be using this to get started on the one piece. And so to cut out this one piece, we're going to trace the bottoms the way that we normally do. But then from the waist, we're going to curve in and then out again. And then we're going to cut a little armhole shape and just make the neckline nice and straight. And then once one half of it is cut out, I'm going to fold it in half and use it to cut the other side so that these pieces are nice and symmetrical. And now this piece that we cut out actually has the bottom of the back but the look of the front that we want. So we're going to use this piece to cut out our back piece before we make any adjustments. And now that we have both of these pieces, we're going to take one of them and cut it down to be the front piece. So I'm going to fold it in half and we're just going to cut this piece down the way that we have been. And then our front piece is done. And moving on to the back, we can leave the bottom part alone, but we're actually going to adjust the top. Firstly, by just folding this in half, and I'm going to cut straight from where the armhole hits out here, and then make another low rounded back. But if you're not a big fan of low backs, you could just cut this straight across here and attach the straps on either side. And there's our back piece. And then lastly, out of the purple, I'm just going to cut two really long strap pieces. 
And then you guys know the drill. We're going to be cutting our front and back pieces out of our lining fabric. And now that we have all of our pieces, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take both of our outer layers and both of our lining pieces, put them pretty side to pretty side, and we're going to sew them across this bottom seam here and either of their side seams. And now that that is sewn, we can go ahead and try this piece on to see if we need to make any adjustments. And for me, I just pinned it where I actually want the neckline to be. It was a little bit too high. So I'm going to adjust that and I'm also going to make the back a little bit lower. And as always, if we make adjustments on this piece, we're going to have to make the same ones on the lining. And now that these have been all fixed up, we're going to sew the straps next the exact same way that we sewed all of those ties. All right, well, I accidentally sewed one of my straps with the wrong side facing out, and it took me like half an hour to seam rip all those tiny stitches, but now I finally have both of my straps. And now I'm going to bring back our swimsuit, and I'm actually going to just cut a little piece of these straps about like two or three inches long, and I'm going to pin them to the back of the swimsuit right at this corner here, making sure that it's far enough away from the top that we're not going to hit it in our seam allowance. And I'm just going to pin this in place on either side. And now that those ones are pinned, we're going to turn this to the front, and I'm going to pin the remaining two straps at either of these corners. And now I'm just going to match up the outer fabric with the lining, making sure they're pretty side to pretty side. And then I'm going to sew all across this top edge, including the neckline, armholes, and back. And now that the top is all sewn, I'm just going to trim down these edges and turn it right side out. And this is looking super cute. And now I'm going to like open it up from the leg hole here. And I'm going to do that same technique that we've been doing of pushing the raw edges to the lining and top stitching it down. All right, and we are finally on to the last steps of finishing up the leg holes. So I'm going to be taking my swimwear elastic. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to zigzag stitch it around the back like this. And then I'm going to fold it over and do our small zigzag stitch on the outside. And once that is sewn, the one piece is done. 